Okay, this lesson is, a, uh, is about triangle centers. Triangles have centers, sort of like circles do, but um, there's more than one depending on how you look at it. You've got your in-center, ortho-center, centroid, and uh, circumcenter. All of these are called points of concurrency um, because they are the places where multiple lines intersect. Um, either medians or perpendicular bisectors or angle bisectors or altitudes. Um, so this is a conversation about triangle centers. Let's just take a quick look at the overview of it. And this, I should mention, this is a brief review. I have uh, other lessons that go into a lot more detail, but this is going to be a brief review of triangle centers. And this is the information uh, about triangle centers that you need to know. Um, you really want to commit all this information to memory, but I'll, I will just sort of refer back to this chart uh, from time to time. I should scroll down a little bit because or maybe I should zoom out a little bit so it'll all fit. Okay, all the, all the information on the screen right now needs to be uh, put into your brain, but I'll refer back to it as we go along. Okay, so this is a fill in the blank situation, obviously. The angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at the what? And we're supposed to pick one of these points of concurrency, one of these triangle centers. Angle bisectors, okay? Um, so the deal is, let's look back at our graphic organizer. Angle bisectors, that's the in-center. So the in-center is formed if you draw multiple angle bisectors, splitting these angles down the middle, um, that's gonna be the in-center. Okay, so in center. The medians of a triangle intersect at the what? Medians, well that's the centroid. Um, notice that, by the way, what is a median? A median is a segment that goes from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So if you look at these uh, pictures, the medians, now I feel like I should zoom back in now. Okay, if you look at these pictures, the medians, um, they go from a vertex to the midpoint. Vertex to a midpoint. Vertex to a midpoint. Okay, so the medians all meet at the centroid. All right, what about altitudes of a triangle? Which, uh, at which point of concurrency uh, do they meet? Altitudes, well, the altitudes meet at the orthocenter. And you just, this is just memorization. So you're gonna have to spend some quality time with this um, document. So the altitudes meet at the orthocenter. Let's take a minute and remember what altitudes are. An altitude is a segment from the vertex that is perpendicular to the opposite side. So these are altitudes um, because they start at a vertex and they end up perpendicular. Notice that they do not have to be at the midpoint. They have to be perpendicular. Okay, so if you have altitudes all drawn, they will meet right here at the orthocenter. Okay, when three or more lines intersect, they intersect at the what? Well, this is just a general category of point of concurrency. That's describing all the rest of these things. Um, all of these are pictures of where um, three or more lines intersect. See, all these are intersecting lines, intersecting lines, intersecting lines, intersecting lines. So all four of these 
are examples of points of concurrency. Okay, so point of concurrency. All right, perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at the what? Um, perpendicular bisectors, you scroll over, that's the circumcenter, circumcenter. Perpendicular bisectors, um, hopefully that term is self-explanatory. If you know what perpendicular means and if you know what bisector means. Perpendicular means it forms a 90 degree angle. So if you look at this line, for example, it's perpendicular. You can see the 90 degrees. Bisector means it cuts something in half. In this case, we're, we're saying that this is hitting the midpoint of the side and cutting this side of the triangle into two equal parts. So it's the perpendicular bisector. It cuts in half, and it's perpendicular. Um, if you build those perpendicular bisectors, uh, they will intersect at the circumcenter, called the circumcenter. Okay, so that last one was circumcenter. All right, again, let me emphasize to you that this is straight memorization. It's easy to understand when you're looking at it, but it is up to you to sit down with this chart and uh, go over it again and again and again and quiz yourself and ask yourself wait a minute um, the circumcenter which one was that oh perpendicular bisectors and later we're going to be talking about the special properties of each of these and you should quiz yourself on that as well um, if you do want to quiz yourself on that um, I do have a quizlet it looks like this um, if you go to um, Quizlet.com and do a search for Mr. Helpful, Not Hurtful, you will find uh, this Triangle Center's um, set of flashcards. And maybe I'll run through them later um, so we can practice together on this on a video. I'll probably make that a separate video though. Anyway, back to work. So, don't forget to study, is the moral of the story. Circle the correct choice. An obtuse triangle, in an obtuse triangle, the orthocenter is um, outside the triangle, inside the triangle, on the triangle. Um, I basically recommend that you do a quick sketch to figure this out. Um, let's see, let's draw an obtuse triangle. Okay, I guess I gotta do it kind of from scratch. So here's an obtuse triangle. Uh, an obtuse triangle has an angle that's larger than 90 degrees. So here I've drawn an obtuse triangle. Orthocenter, they mention the word orthocenter. Okay, so you know this, I could have uh, picked any of these four triangle centers. I could have just as easily said, um, you know, circumcenter or incenter or centroid. So whatever you see me do now, make sure that you could do it with any of these. Um, but it said orthocenter. So I had to know that orthocenter is altitudes and uh, intersecting. And I had to know what altitude is. So remember, an altitude, these are the ones that uh, drop straight down. They start from a vertex, and they must be perpendicular to the opposite side. So I'm going to go back to my uh, worksheet here and try to draw uh, my altitudes. Okay, so the first one is really easy. So here's the, uh, the obvious vertex here. If I draw an altitude, all right, that would just be straight down like this. I'm going to draw it extra long just in case uh, I, need, I need it to be longer. Okay, so this would be an altitude. Okay, that's an altitude right there. Um, notice this would be, um, it starts at a ver vertex and it is perpendicular, that's an altitude. Now, the drawing the other altitudes are a little bit trickier than that. Um, because 
Okay, so say if um, look at this side over here, for example. Um, this side, to see what's happening, I would really need to extend this line out further, okay? Um, because if I want to draw the altitude to this side, it's, uh, say if I want to start from this angle over here, I have to start from a vertex, and then, uh, but I need to be perpendicular to the opposite side. The only way to be perpendicular like this is um, if I extend the side out here. There's no way for me to be perpendicular uh, and still be inside the triangle. So this is going to stretch out uh, this way. Hmm, this might even go off the screen. Um, so the idea is, look, I have my altitude right here, the first one I drew, and I have another altitude here. Okay, it started from a vertex, and it is perpendicular. Okay, so this is an altitude. Okay, vertex, perpendicular, that's an altitude. Now, it doesn't look like these are intersecting, does it? Um, but that's only because um, I'm not showing that these lines keep going. So um, let's do this. Let me move this down so I have space. Okay, so I need to stretch these altitudes out so I can see where they intersect. So imagine that I take these altitudes and I stretch them out. Now you can see where they intersect. Kabam! That is where these two altitudes intersect. So guess what? This is the orthocenter. Okay, so the orthocenter of this obtuse triangle is obviously outside the triangle. So that is how you do a problem like this. All right, so let's move on to number 14. Um, for number 14, we're going to have to take a look at the special properties of these triangle centers. Okay, so let's look back at our chart, our graphic organizer. But if we scroll down, look at some special properties, um, especially these two. Um, one of these triangle centers is equidistant from the vertices. That means it's the same distance uh, to all the corners of the triangle. The other one is equidistant from the sides. All right, that means it's equally distant to the sides of the triangle. Okay, so let's look up and see which one is which. All right, so the circumcenter, it turns out that the circumcenter is equally distant to the vertices, the corners. On the other hand, uh, the incenter is equally distant to the sides. All right, let me show you that as a picture. So take a look at this picture. Um, this point of concurrency, this is what I mean by equally distant from the vertices. These three distances shown here in red would all be the same. Okay, equally distant to the vertices. That would make this the circumcenter. On the other hand, this point of concurrency is equally distant to the sides, like this. Okay? And these are perpendicular distances, by the way, so, but equally distant to the sides. That would make this the in-center. So the planners want to build a mall that is equidistant to the three roads shown. Should they place the mall at the circumcenter, the centroid, the in-center, or the orthocenter? Look, the orthocenter doesn't have any special properties, so the orthocenter is not going to be equidistant to anything. Um, the centroid has special properties, but it doesn't have anything to do, do with being equidistant from anything. Okay, the centroid, looking at those special properties, the centroid is the center of gravity, uh, meaning I could balance the shape on uh, the end of a pole at the centroid. And it also has these equations where it's being split up into a big part and a small part according to these equations. But none of this has anything to do with being equally distant to anything. So, 
That's why I had mentioned right from the beginning either the circum center or the in center. So those are going to be the choices that we're really choosing between. Now, if we want the mall to be equidistant to the roads that are shown, the question is, um, in this picture, are these roads the sides of the triangle or are they the vertices? Or are they, they the corners of the triangle? Um, I hope you can see that these roads are the sides of the triangle. I-10, you know, that interstate, that's a road, but that's also a side of the triangle. This road is a side, and this road is a side. The roads are the sides of the triangle. So we really are saying that we want the mall to be equally distant um, to these roads, okay? So we're looking for something that the distance to that road, the distance to that road, and the distance to this road will all be the same. Okay? And uh, so the point of concurrency that is equidistant to the sides of a triangle like this, um, that is your in center. The in center is equidistant from the sides of a triangle. So that's the answer to this particular question is um, we should pick the in center. Okay? Now, just to make a point, so I could have easily made this problem a little bit different. And instead of talking about the roads here, I could have talked about um, the towns. And I, I could say, well, say there's a town here, and I could have given these names, but I'll just, right now, I'm going to call it town A, town B, and town C. If I had changed this question and asked, um, well, where should we put the mall so that it's equidistant to the three towns, all right, equally distant to the towns, then which triangle center would I have picked? Yeah, if I was talking about the towns, then I would have picked the circum center uh, because the towns are the vertices of the triangle and the circum center I missed. No, I didn't. The circum center is equidistant from the vertices. So just um, that's how problems like that work. Watch out for it. Okay. More about triangle centers. <laughs> All right. Point A, uh, looking at problem number 15, point A is the uh, blah, blah, blah. A is the circumcenter of triangle CDG. What? Okay, this is better. Point G. So that was, you know, I had a typo there. Uh, it should say point G is the cir circumcenter of triangle ABC. Now we're good. Um, so find the following lengths. Well, circumcenter, again, you have to stop and focus on what the special properties are of circumcenter. And uh, remember, this, the special property of a circumcenter is that it's uh, equidistant from the vertices. Equidistant to vertices. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, I'm gonna mark these distances in red. Okay, so if this is the circumcenter, um, then this distance and this distance and this distance. Okay, those three distances I just marked in red should all be the same um, since this is the circumcenter. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Also, um, look at these are all right triangles, okay, because. Uh, and uh, because we got perpendicular bisectors happening. So don't forget about your Pythagorean theorem. We may, we may need that later. So let's, uh, let's see what we got. Let's see what's, what's going on, what's happening. Okay, EC. EC is over here, smiley face. So that's what we need to find next. Uh, but that's obvious because kabam, we know that BE is 12, 
This has got to be the midpoint. See how, how they're even marked congruent? So that means EC has got to be 12. Okay, so we did that. Uh, let's see. What's next? What about um, CB? Well, CB is this right here. It's this whole length. Okay, well, if uh, BE is 12, then the whole distance has got to be 24. So CB is going to be 24. Okay, what about GB? Okay, look, GB is one of my red distances. Um, and since all three of these are the same, since it's equidistant to the vertices, if I know one of them, I know all three. Do I know any of these three red lengths? Well, yes, I do. I've got the 15 right here. If AG is 15, all three red lengths here are 15, including BG. So BG or GB is going to be 15. What about GC? Same thing. That's another one of these red arms. GC should also be 15. What about AF? Okay, AF. Um, I'm going to have to do the Pythagorean theorem to find AF, okay? So let's do the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle right here. Didn't mean to get rid of all of that. Okay, so look at this triangle right here with me. Um, I'm talking about the triangle that goes like this. Okay, if I do a little Pythagorean theorem on that triangle, that's going to look like this. Um, let's see, a squared plus b squared. So I'm going to do x squared plus 6 squared is equal to 15 squared. See what I did there? A, B, C. So that's going to be x squared is equal to 15 squared minus 6 squared. I just subtracted 6 squared from both sides. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides like this. Kabam, kabam. I like to put this whole thing in my calculator at once. Square root of 15 squared minus 6 squared. That's just how I roll. Can you hang? I don't know. I just don't know. You can try. Um, of course, this is all about my TI-30 XS multi-view. Now, after all that, I forgot what I was doing. Um, 15 squared minus 6 squared is what I'm doing. So 15 squared minus 6 squared. That is 3 radical 21. If I needed an exact value, I'm going to hit my little toggle button. And so that is 13.7 to the nearest tenth. Okay. So I could have put, what was that again? 3 radical 21. Okay, so be prepared to put either one. So either 3 radical 21 or 13.7. Either way, that's uh, AF. Okay, so that is how you do that. Let's look at number 16 now. G is the centroid. Okay, um, so since we're dealing with centroid, we need to look at the special properties of a centroid. Um, okay, let me remind you about the special properties of the centroid. First of all, remember that the centroid is the intersection of medians. And medians are these segments that start at a vertex and they go to the midpoint of the opposite side. So just in case it ever comes up, please understand that uh, this is a midpoint. So these two sides are the same. Anyway, the special properties of a centroid are like this. The centroid divides each median into two parts so that the distance to the vertex is twice as long as the distance to the midpoint. This is what I'm saying. Um, it basically comes down to these little formulas here. But see your centroid? If this is the centroid, it splits this median up into a small part and a bigger part. Okay, and it comes down like this. Um, the small part, you know, the big part is twice as big as the small part. 
Okay, so if this, if this small part was 5, then this big part would be 10. All right, that's a, a way to think about it. Um, also, that means that, watch this, if I took the big part and I split it up again, then watch what happens to that big part. The big part used to be 10, but now I've split the big part up and it's 5 and 5. So because of that, um, anytime you have a centroid, it's easy to split up the centroid into three equal parts. Like if the small part is 5, then you could look at the centroid as being 5, 5, and 5. Okay, if the small part was 6, this would be like 6, 6, and 6. Okay, so that means the small part is a third of the, uh, of the whole thing. And the bigger part is two-thirds of the whole thing, okay? Because it's two out of the three pieces. Anyway, so keep that in the back of your mind as we do this problem. Okay, so, so when you see centroid, start thinking about um, splitting things up into three, three equal parts. Okay, so most of, uh, we see the AD is 8, that's shown. C, uh, AG is 10, that's shown. Um, here's one thing that's not shown. CD is 18. Okay, so that's this right here. CD is this that's all the way from one end to the other. It's the whole median. Now, so let's work on that. Um, Actually, let's not work on that yet. Let's, let's do one piece at a time. Say if I want to find uh, BD. Let's see, where's that? Where's that? Okay, BD. Okay, so BD um, is going to be 8 because um, these blue lines are medians, so they are hitting midpoints. So if this is 8, then that's 8. So BD is going to be 8. Um, let's see, what about EG? If I want to do EG, okay, EG is this distance right here. Um, this is, uh, EG is the small part, okay? Um, so I've got EG is right here. That is the small part. But this is the big part. Um, remember that the big part is double the small part. So if the bigger part is 10, then this is going to be 5. Remember, uh, we could look at it as three equal parts. So if I take this 10 and split it up, that's 5 and 5. So this is also going to be 5. So G, G, E, or E, G is going to be 5. Okay, 5, 5, and 5. Um, what about C, G? Where's that? Okay, C, G. All right, I'm going to have to clean this up so I can see what's going on. Um, C, G is this distance right here. All right, there's CG. That is the long distance, okay? Um, but this is what I'm gonna do. Let me go ahead and split this into my three equal parts, all right? These two are CG, and I've got this other part over here. Here's where I'm gonna use the 18, all right? Um, 18 is the whole thing. If I split that into three equal parts, that would be 6, 6, and 6, okay? I'm just, I'm just doing 18 divided uh, three ways equally. So that means that CG, uh, this red part over here, is 12, okay? Because it's the two sixes. Um, let's see, let me just skip because I notice here they're asking me for DG. So DG, we just found it, that's 6. Okay. What about um, AB? Um, remember, we know that that's 8. AB is this distance right here, the whole thing. That is 16. Okay, what about AE? Okay. Um, all right, yeah. All right, I really had this a minute ago. Remember when I split this up into three equal parts? And uh, because this was 10, okay, from there to there, um, then I went ahead and said, well, look, this is going to be 5, 5, and 5. So guess what AE is?
15. Okay, so that is how you do a centroid problem. Just get that back into the front of your brain. All right, um, now number 17. In this diagram, P is the in center of RTV. In center. What was the special property of in center? Remember that the in center is equidistant to the sides of the triangle. So if this is the in center, just beef this up a little bit. If this is the in center, then these three lengths should be the same. All right? This is one, this is one, and this is one. All right? Is the three distances perpendicular distances to the sides. Okay, um, we're supposed to find length PU, which is one of those three sides. So if we find one, we find them all. So let's go ahead and find PW. Um, I'm going to put just an X on that. If I find PW, I'm finding PU. It's all the same thing. Um, but I, I'm looking at PW because I'm seeing my uh, my right triangle happening. So um, I'm seeing PW because I'm seeing, um, look at this right triangle. We should be able to do the Pythagorean theorem, so let's do that. So if we do the Pythagorean theorem, we're doing x squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Um, so that's x squared equals 13 squared minus 12 squared. Taking the square root of both sides, all right, and I could put that whole thing in my calculator like I did last time. Um, but I know this is going to be 5. So x is 5. That means PW here is 5, which means PU is also 5. All right, a little Pythagorean theorem there for you. Okay, last but not least, um, all of these special segments that make the uh, triangle centers, you know, all of these special words, like perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors, medians, altitudes. You need to know what they are and what they look like. So just really quickly, remember that perpendicular bisectors are perpendicular to a side and it cuts the side in half. Angle bisectors, um, they start at a vertex and they cut the angle in half. A median, median starts from a vertex and it goes to the, to the midpoint of the opposite side. You can see the pictures of these things as we go. All right, there's our angle bisector splitting an angle in half. Here's a perpendicular bisector. See how it's perpendicular and it's uh, cutting the side in half. Median, it start, see how it starts from a vertex and then it goes to a midpoint. That's what these are all medians. And then altitude remember starts at a vertex and then it's perpendicular to the opposite side okay you have to know all of those things so this is a little mini quiz on that um, so we are given that AG and GD are congruent okay it, thus AG is this okay and then GD is this so that that makes G the midpoint okay that that was the point of that midpoint G is the midpoint okay um, so keep that in mind we're also told that angle ACF is congruent to angle DCF so let's see a C F all right I should draw all right, so here's angle ACF, shown here in green, and here's angle DCF, shown here in red. Those angles are supposed to be congruent. So let's just keep all that in mind. All right, so median. Which one of these segments is the median? Remember that a median, Median uh, goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side, like this. Vertex to midpoint. Okay, so looking at this, if I want to go from vertex to midpoint, whoops, I got off track there. G is the midpoint. So if I want to go from the vertex 
to the midpoint, um, I'm talking about GC or CG. This would be my median, all right? Vertex to midpoint, that's GC. So that would be B, okay? So that, that's the median. Altitude. Remember what altitude is. An altitude starts from a vertex, but it drops perpendicular to the opposite side. Vertex, perpendicular, that's an altitude. Okay, so if I start at the vertex again, and I go perpendicular, then I'm doing CE. That's the altitude, vertex, perpendicular. So CE, that's D. Okay, so that is my uh, altitude. Angle bisector, all right? An angle bisector just splits at an angle down the middle. Um, so since the, the green angle and the red angle are the same, then that makes this shared side here is an angle bisector of the bigger angle up here, okay? So that means CF is the angle bisector because it splits the big angle into two congruent angles. So CF or FC. So that's this one is my angle bisector. Now, perpendicular bisector, um, it has to hit the midpoint, all right, because it's a bisector. It means it has to cut the side in half. So it has to hit the midpoint, and it has to be perpendicular, all right? It's not going to the vertex or at least it doesn't have to go to the vertex, but it has to be perpendicular. That's why BG here is gonna be my uh, perpendicular bisector. So BG, that is A. Okay, so that's a nice little re review of the information uh, pertaining to triangle centers and points of concurrency.